access to health care and then affordable access to health care. One of the things is we do eventually, when we have people without, who aren't insured or whatever, we do eventually take care of everybody, but it tends to be an emergency room, the most expensive place to provide health care. And we do very little prevention. The people who are struggling to pay the bills, as Mr. Carlson mentioned, the co-pays and everything are so high. Um, lots of people, even if they have coverage, they can't afford to go. And so it's bankrupting people and they wait until it gets to be a crisis and then we end up paying for emergency room care. One point I'd like to make about the cost of health care, the U.S. this year, the estimates are we're going to be spending $7,000 per person. Minnesota is much cheaper, we're only about $6,500 per person. And you don't think about that because that's not what you're paying. So you pay plus what your employer pays, so if you pay in premiums, co-pays, deductibles, which you pay um, in taxes, which you pay in Medi Medicare, um, what we pay totally, including nursing homes and everything, is about $6,500 a person, which explains why we've got such a big problem. And as Andy mentioned about the paperwork, we're spending about 30% of our healthcare dollars now on paperwork. Uh, with mental illness, um, we've got a serious problem with access to it, and the problem isn't by denying people the care when they need it. And as you and Senator Clark mentioned, we do need to do the outreach because people with mental illness, by the nature of their illness, don't go to get it off. But because we failed to do it right away, we um, somebody said that the biggest place where we house people with mental illness now um, and chemical dependency is either they're homeless, they're not housed at all, or they're in, often in prisons or jail because they with untreated mental illness or chemical dependency, we have horrid things happen, and uh, it's one of, I talk to anybody who works in corrections, and they can tell you how many of the people in their correctional facility are people who committed their offense under the influence of some substance or who are mentally ill or both. So thank you for that. We're out here. But you talked about the cost of the system. I didn't mention earlier we're spending an estimated $6,500 a person. I got a family of four, so that's $26,000 a year, which again, we don't see most of it because it's paid to employer and ourselves and governments and everyone. But um, with that kind of price, I'd like to point out that Switzerland is about, it's close to $4,000 a year now for per person in healthcare. And Switzerland, I don't mention because they got the best healthcare system in the world, but I mention them because of the second most expensive. We're almost 50% more than the second most expensive country, and about double what most of the others are. All right, what we got to learn is that you take care of people up front, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And we really aren't doing a very good job with it. I've noticed, having been around the legislature for a number of years, that this past year's first term of class, which is a quarter of the legislature, is really different than the rest of the legislation in the prioritization of health care because they're hearing it. They're the ones who are most aggressively spending time talking to their constituents in the campaign in every part of the state. Um, some suburban races, some inner city races, some a lot of them from greater Minnesota. It's the number one issue people face because, as I said earlier, I think most middle class families are one notice away from bankruptcy. I'd also like to say one comment about prescription drug issue. Um, one of the issues that I believe that, that healthcare proposal that I believe would make a lot of sense, but one of the issues we do here is a very poor job in setting prices on issues like this. Um, you mentioned your prescription, 7,000, 7,500 or so, and I was just getting for much less. Veterans Administration gets the best prices of anyone in the country because they negotiate for them, and they are pretty much able to do that. The Medicare Part D, which passed a couple of years ago, the prescription drug lobby was very heavily involved. They succeeded big time because they succeeded in getting the federal government to say, we will, they prohibited in law, prohibited the federal government from negotiating prices. Basically saying the pharmaceutical companies, we're gonna provide pharmaceutical benefits to seniors, but you can tell us what we're gonna pay, which is, a, recipe for disaster and earlier this year we had a health committee hearing in Mankato and one farmer told about getting a Lupron, which is a shot for prostate cancer, $1,200 for one shot. And he was 
he thought it was a mistake and he complained and so on. No, that was the cost. Three months later, it was every three months shot. His doctor said he needed another one and he said, well, set up a time to go to Mankato next week to get it. And he said, oh no, we got a place right here in New Orleans to get it. And he did it and he got the bill, $9,635. Oh. And he wrote says, no, it was not a mistake. And he was okay because he was Medicare supplemental coverage, and so um, the line or the federal government paid like 7000 the line paid a couple thousand, whatever. He had his co-payment, and that was it, but we don't negotiate drug prices well, and it's the most anti-competitive system we have here, which is why a number of years ago we had Minnesotans going up to Canada to buy drugs. The same drugs, and they're not price fixing there, they simply negotiate prices, so um, those are, <coughs> You've mentioned a number of the issues that are coming up, but I wanted to say that I'm optimistic there's going to be change just looking at the newer legislators who, who are so passionate about it because they're hearing from constituents. Um, I'm a big believer that as part of people, when they have a choice in their health care, some people say, oh, they're going to just consume as much as they possibly can get their hands on. Um, and despite um, the gentleman earlier mentioning colonoscopies, I don't think most people are waiting, even if they're free, to run out and say, I got an afternoon free, I want a colonoscopy. I <laughs> um, nor would they want to. They, people, people try not to get any more health care than they need. Um, I think that one of the ways we, we ought to be addressing this is, frankly, if you say to people, if you try very aggressively to make sure they fill out um, uh, advanced directive, uh, live and will, most people don't want to be resuscitated when they're terminally ill and they're in pain and their heart stops. And yet, if you don't fill one out, it's going to happen. And, and so I think that we should be looking at making sure people have some ways of health healthcare is com a commodity, something you buy and sell, or whether it's, I call it a community need, something everybody needs. Like an example I always give is police and fire protection. We all need it, we all get it, and if your house is being burglarized and you call 911 and they connect you with the police dispatcher. They don't ask you whether you have police insurance, and if so, what police insurance plan you have. They they tell you we're coming. And I I think we have to make a decision as a society. Do we do we value it? Because everybody's placing all this, spending all this time on issue and how we fill it in. And when gentleman over there talking earlier about how many hours spending filling out forms, when we talk about all the paperwork you fill out. And we talk about how that's 30 percent of our health care dollar that's not the, your time it's only the provider time and the insurance time and everything else your time is on top of that and so i i think it's time i've been pushing the idea that we need to treat health care as a community need that everybody's everybody's covered by it we start with the premise when you are sick or need medical care in this country you're going to the state we're going to get it and better yet we're going to make sure you get as much preventive care as you need so you can have the ability to take care of yourself and avoid the need for medical care as well. But I think we have to get past this where everybody, it is, as you said, a patchwork system. So he's trying to get it through cold road. He's trying to do it with um, part-time work because it's all it can work. Everybody's got their own story on it. And I think we would save a lot of time and hassle and emotional energy if we would just treat it as a community.